Here is an exercise which will make things clear about independent or dependent events. The question here is, determine whether events are independent or dependent, then find probability. It's an extremely good question. I'd like you to copy this question. And then once you have answered it, then look into my suggestions. So that way you'll gain a lot of confidence about the subject. Now part A is probability of getting heads in first three tossing of coin. Part B is probability of rolling three in first three rolls of a dice. C is probability of drawing two cards of spades. And D is probability to pick ace and then king after the first card is replaced. Now here are my suggestions. We are basically trying to figure out if the events are independent or dependent. How do you find that? The only way is you have to see that when there are more than one events, is the outcome of next event affected by the previous one? That is the question to be answered. Now as you read this question, question number one, it says probability of getting heads in first three tossing of coin. Now when you toss a coin, you have head or tails, two outcomes. Now what is the probability of getting heads? It is 50% or half, right? So it is half. Now when we say probability of getting heads in first three tossing of coins, that means it is an and operation. You get heads and then again heads and then again heads, right? So the key word here is and. So and means you will multiply the probabilities. Now the second thing which you also saw was that the outcome of the second is not affected by that of the first. Now since you now flip the coin, you may get head or tails. It doesn't matter what happened in the previous toss. Do you agree with me? So if it does not matter, if the outcomes are not influenced, then this event should be? independent. So I'll write I for independent here. So it's an independent event. Second, we're trying to find AND operation, right? We have to get three heads in a row. So heads and heads and heads, right? Probability of getting one head per toss is half. So for next one again half and next one again half, right? So that gives us the answer one out of eight. So the probability is 1 out of 8 for getting heads. So we can write this as probability of getting heads, heads and heads, right, is equal to half times half times half, which is equal to 1 out of 8. I think that's absolutely clear, right? So this is an independent event where we are doing three events, tossing or flipping the coin thrice. And we are expecting answers of heads and again heads and again heads, right? Probability of head is half. So three times we just multiply it and get our answer. One out of eight. Next one. Probability of rolling three in first three rolls of a dice. You can also think like you have three and you, you have three die and you just roll them all together. You can do that also. Either, in either case, when you roll a die, there are six numbers on it, correct? Probability of getting three when you roll it once is what? There's only one three and there are six other numbers, I mean total numbers. So probability is one out of six. Next time when you roll, does it make a difference what came previous time? No, it does not. That is the question you need to ask. You know it does not. Therefore, it is an independent event, right? And every time you roll, you have the same probability. It's a fair dice, right? So you get 1 over 6 times 1 over 6. And that is your answer, right? So 1 over 6 cubed. So let's do 36 times 6. 6 times 6, 36. 3, 18, 19, 20, 2, 1, 6. So 1 over 2, 1, 6 is probability of getting 3, 3, and 3. When you roll, a dice, right? Now the C is probability of drawing two cards of spades. Now in a deck of standard cards, how many cards do we have? 
we have 52 cards, right? Now there are 52 cards and each color, spades, how many spades are there? Spades are 13, right? So 13 spades. And probably you're drawing two cards of spades. So we have to get two cards of spades, right? So in this case, let us say you make a draw first and then you again draw another card. Mind, you're not replacing. So when you draw the card once, earlier it was 52 and probability of getting probability of getting spades is 13 out of 52, right? Now, let us say, at random, what is the probability of getting spades? It is 13 out of 52. Now, if you draw spades, then how many cards of spades are left for you? 12. And how many cards in the deck? 51. One less than 52, correct? So, next withdrawal of a card, maybe random, is influenced by the first result. You get the point? So therefore, it is a dependent event, right? It is dependent. Now, in the case of dependent, we know things change. Probability doesn't remain the same. So next time when you draw a card from the remaining 51, the probability will be 12 over 51. Do you see that? So that is the probability of a drawing two spades. I mean spades after spades, right? So that is what the answer is, 13 over 52 times 12 over 51, correct? So you can multiply this and get your answer. 13 over 52 is 1 out of 4 times 12 over 51, and that gives you, 12 goes 3 times, right? And this also can be simplified with 3, so 3 times 1 is 3, 17. So 1 out of 17 is your answer, right? So do all this calculation, and I hope you understand the concept. The concept here is, when you are not replacing the card, you are changing the set. Earlier the set had 52 cards and you took away one, so 51 remains, right? So that is why the outcome is influenced and therefore this is a dependent event. Part D. Probability to pick Ace and then King after the first card is replaced. Now, if you replace the card, in that case, the deck is same, right? So, what is the probability of picking an ace? There are four aces, right? Four aces out of 52 cards. Now, if you replace it, again, there are 52 cards, right? So, that means second draw is not affected by the first, and therefore, it is a case of independent event, right? Now, second time, what do you want to pick up? Probability to pick ace and then king, right, and then king, so and operation, and means multiply, 4 over 52, it is not or in one pick, right, so it is and, so when you do and operation, you have to multiply the probabilities, and that is your answer, so this is probability of getting ace and king, right, which is 4 over 52 times 4 over 52, since there are 4 aces and 4 kings, which is 1 over 13 times 1 over 13 or 1 over 169. So that is the probability. I hope with this example you understand what is independent event and what is dependent event, right? And you are absolutely ready to look into more questions on compound events and finding probability in such compound events. Thank you.